Hey guys, Young Blood with you for another episode of the Inbox. Starting off with a question from Night Striker, who says, "Based on current knowledge, will a true neutral playstyle be viable? Piracy and bounty hunting, depending on circumstances. If not, can we have a lawful and unlawful character on the same account, sharing the same ships, gear, resources, etc.? My predicament is all that my ships are melted, CCU'd, ungiftable at this point. So a new create account would be a financial headache." Um, since I have so many good ships in the original account. So I think the problem here is the unknown. Um, we don't necessarily know how much carryover there's going to be between your characters as far as the reputation system is concerned. Um, I, it's a big enough concern to where we've said in our organization that if you're going to be doing piracy, you need to have a second account for it until we find out more details on that. The other problem is we don't necessarily know how much is tied to the ship and how much is tied to the player. Because if you've got this really well-known cutlass that everybody's looking for, and that's your pirate cutlass, right? But you then want to use your good character to go maybe do a cargo run with that cutlass. How much bleed over is there there? I think almost everything is going to be associated with the character, but you also don't know how much right now the scanning and identification of players is really going to come into effect. Because you know maybe somebody realizes who the ship is belongs to but doesn't necessarily know based on the scans who's in that ship there's complications there now as far as a true neutral and being able to do piracy and bounty hunting depending on circumstances bounty hunting if you're doing it the right way is considered a lawful activity so there's not really a problem there piracy regardless of the scenario is considered an unlawful activity now you could potentially do some piracy like let's say you go into a known pirate sector it's unmonitored space and you're kind of doing like a um, you know, a pirate piracy on the pirates type of deal. Um, if it's unmonitored space, nobody's going to find out unless they report you or there's something along those lines. I think ultimately what you're going to see and probably your best bet is going to be if you want to do something that's considered illegal and it's monitored space, chances are that first warning that you're going to get is going to be something you can probably pay off through a fine. So if you kind of balance what you're ending up as far as your criminality or your crime stat rating, um, or you're just making sure that it doesn't climb over a certain point, you can probably stay in that true neutral category. Redbeard says, in your opinion, with the hammerhead now in the game, where do you see the Redeemer? Meaning, what ships will it excel against, what ships will be weak against, and what would its role in a large-scale battle be? Do you think CIG sees the ship the same way that you do? I don't know if they see it in the same way that I do. <laughs> um, it's basically been you know, put on the back burner, but I think ultimately what we go to is the original intention of the ship, because that's typically what they design to and balance to. Um, ultimately, what it's supposed to be is a gunboat first and a dropship second, so it's got that kind of added benefit to it. Um, and with the intention of adding more guns to it, they're really going all in on it being a gunship. Now, keep in mind, I think a lot of people are saying Hammerhead versus Redeemer, Hammerhead versus Redeemer. They are totally different ships. You know, a Hammerhead's 100 meters long. Um, Redeemer is, I think, less than half of that. Um, you're talking about a crew of probably six to eight on the Hammerhead, um, depending on how much you're leveraging the, the avionics blades. Um, you know, if you're using the AI blades on the Redeemer, you know, you can get by with flying the ship solo. So you're also talking about, what was it, 26 or 20... 24, sorry, bad math, 24 size 4 weapons on the Hammerhead. The the, the, the Redeemer is not going to do that at all. But keep in mind, the Redeemer is going to be much faster, it's going to be much more agile, it's going to be much cheaper to operate. They're just totally different ships. So as far as the Redeemer, I think it's going to be a ship that does really well against things like Constellations and Freelancers and... Um, you know, some of the medium to smaller whole series ships. Basically, anything in kind of that you know, probably 60 to 70 meter range and below, I think it's going to do really well. I think it may end up doing pretty well against some of the fighters too, depending on how much it grows and what the speed and agility end up being. Um, ultimately, I think it's really designed to go against some of those medium sized ships, not necessarily the larger ships that a hammerhead would be able to bring more pain against. But keep in mind, the hammerhead's also going to do really well in situations to where there's a lot of fighters engaging it. I think the redeemer is going to do well if there's a couple fighters engaging it. They're just, they're really hard to compare. They both kind of have a gunship feel to them, but they're on totally different scales, so there's really just different scenarios where they play in. Um, as far as the Redeemer in a large-scale battle, I think it does a little bit of area denial, but I think it can also be a little bit more offensive and can kind of zoom in and out of some of the bigger ships to help provide coverage, whereas the Hammerhead's not necessarily going to be able to fly around and do that. Um, it's going to be more stationary, relying on other ships to come to it. Um, Jeffrey Numala says, I have a whole B and a core. core. Um, I've been thinking about swapping out the core for a different ship because it has LTI. Is there any advantage to having the core as opposed to the whole B? Um, I like the whole B a lot. You know, price to the amount of cargo that you can haul is great. Um, it's a huge exponential growth over the whole A, which is a lot of cargo compared to something like the core. Um, I 
the only thing I like about the the Reliant line is the cockpit. Um, I've said this a lot of times on the channel. I, I don't understand the ship. I don't think it flies well. I don't think it has good weaponry. It doesn't carry enough cargo. Um, there's just nothing about it that I really say this is a ship that people should have. So until they prove me, to me that I'm wrong or they make some changes to the ship from a balancing perspective, my advice is get rid of that thing. <laughs> you know, if you like the cockpit and you like the ability to carry two people in a relatively cheap ship, then fine. You know, you do you. It's not a terrible ship. It's just there's a lot better options out there. Um, but I, if with the whole B and if you're talking about having something that's cargo capable i'd take the b over the the core every day um the one thing you want to keep in mind is the core should be probably a little bit quicker it also keeps its cargo protected in interior um so as far as like the protection escapability and durability i would say you're probably better off in the core but honestly neither one's going to be a great ship for going deep into you know dangerous territory and surviving so if you're talking about monitored space travel and uh, you know you don't mind bringing an escort along the whole b every day uh, Cromwell the Conqueror, how will CIG incentivize using in-game comms and data storage if it can be stolen? Wouldn't using out-of-game VoIP and Google Doc work better if you really want to keep it safe? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, that's one of the things that I think we've talked about for a long time, and it's part of the reason we're still you know, planning on using Mumble right now for um, Star Citizen within our organization. Um, that can obviously change, but there has to be that benefit, and that's what I've said since the beginning when we started having these conversations, because ships like the Herald and hacking and those types of things are going to be real gameplay mechanics. And if you can just avoid that by not using the in-game systems, then what's the point of using the in-game systems? One thing I think is going to help with that is actually um, going to be like the face um, the face over IP. I think that's going to be something that's dedicated to interior. So if you want that part of the game and that level of immersion, you're going to have to use that. Um, you know, I think also like a Google Doc works well, but you're going to have to be alt tabbing or using a second monitor and scrolling around and documenting it. It's going to probably take more time than just using in-game systems. So if they make that efficient, there's value there. Um, also, if they make it easy to share with friends and it's secure there's value to that too, especially if there's like an organizational level repository. Um, I think past that, I think there also has to be some other benefits. Like if you're using in-game voice, you also maybe get some screen prompts. So for example, if Bill and the Hornet is talking, um, you know, maybe I can see like a little blip on my screen that he's up on my six o'clock. So, you know, if you're flying around and somebody says, you know, I got somebody on my six, I need help. Well, if you know immediately where they're at based on the, the interaction of the in-game comms, there's a ton of value to that. So I think CIG can do it. It's going to be a tricky way to balance it. But once they figure it out, um, then it really just becomes a risk reward pro proposition that everybody's going to have to make on their own. Uh, Rumpel Stiltskinson says, uh, what do you think of the Asperia Blade as a potential racer? I think it's a great option. Um, it's small, it's fast, it's going to be agile. Um, I think it's going to be one of the smaller, fastest ships in the game. So, I mean, when you're talking about it as a racer, I mean, it may not have been purpose-built for that, but then keep in mind the Vanduul don't necessarily do racing, to my knowledge. So, it's just a ship that's taken from being an interceptor and turned into a racer, and I think it's going to compete with all the others really well. Um, it, it's hard to say more than that right now, but... Um, yeah, it's probably a little bit wider than, you know, something like a Razor. Um, so as far as, like, maneuverability, it doesn't necessarily have the traditional design, but the ship is very small, so I don't really see any issues there. I think it'll be a good choice. Um, Kai says, um, I'm wanting to get an Anvil Hawk when possible, but I want to be more of a secret agent type person for my buddies. Uh, do you think the Hawk is a plausible option? Uh it, that really depends. You know, I don't really know what you mean by a secret agent type of person. You know, if you're talking about something like a CIA agent who's kind of being like a field operator or something like that, it may be okay. It's got some specialties. It's got, you know, some decent weaponry on board. Um, you know, if you need to uh, you know, talk maybe more like FBI type of person where you have to acquire criminals, then yes, I think that's something where you can actually apprehend somebody and put them in the back of the ship. Um, I think if you're just talking about reconnaissance, it does have the ability to look straight down based on the cockpit glass, so you're able to monitor targets that are below you. Um, so I think there's a lot of value there. I think it could fit for what you want, but honestly, it really depends on what you mean by secret agent, because if you're saying, you know, I want to be more of a spy, then something like a Herald or something that's going to be more about data collection is going to be a better option than something like the Hawk. If you're talking about something that's a little bit more combat focused of a special agent or a secret agent, um, then I think the Hawk kind of fits the bill fine but I, I would need more information on what you actually mean there. 
And our last two questions are patron questions, starting off with one from Jay Beatnik. Uh, best place in the PU to take a date and 3.0, of course. Um, that's a great question because it is a very scenic and there's a lot of nice things to see, but nothing is going to top uh, Yella at night. So I would head over to like Deacon's or um, you know one of the outposts, move away from the lights just a little bit, let the rings get in position so they're right over your head. Maybe you get a little shadow of Crusader in the background. Primo spot. And the last question is from Death Adder. says, what chip are you most excited about? It says it's a bit of a fluff, fluff question. That's okay. Um, I would say two that I actually talked about in this video are ones that I'm really excited about. The Redeemer has always been one of my favorite chips. Um, the idea of a gunboat is right up my alley, especially the way I like to play, um, especially now that we've gotten confirmation that AI blades are going to be in there. Um, so it's, you know, a super powerful one-man ship in my mind. Um, and then the Hammerhead. Um, you know, the Hammerhead came out. It was going to be the Polaris. I'm still really excited for the Polaris because that's the biggest ship that I have. Um, but as far as that Hammerhead is concerned, it's it's big, it's powerful. Um, you know, I think it kind of fits that gunboat category on a larger scale. A lot of what I want to do in the game is kind of fleet escort operations and coordinating other ships. Um, so where I don't need to bring my Polaris, I can bring out the Hammerhead and kind of provide that area of defense, and that's what I was really excited about. So um, those two would probably be the ones. Um, and then the other one I'm excited about right now is going to be the uh, Misk, uh, the Misk Razor, um, because flying that through canyons on Daymar sounds like it's going to be very, very awesome. So there you go, guys. That's this episode of The Inbox. If you have questions, get them in. Otherwise, stay tuned for more, and have a great day. Take care.